um, inadequate response in about 40%. So even the best treatment that we have right now, not everybody would get the best response category possible. So even if you get the most powerful treatment, there's about one in two where we, you've responded well, but not fantastically, and we can still do better. Um, some of the more powerful regimens can be difficult to give in older patients because it ha they tend to have more side effects, and when you're older, you're, you've got less immune, a less good immune system, and your blood counts are less able to put up with chemotherapy. And it's the concept known as high-risk genetics, which I hope the next slide shows. Yeah, it does. Okay, so the, 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 one, the one test that a lot of us would do, and not everyone would do it, but the one test that a lot of us may do is a genetic test. And this is not genetics on your own genetics, okay? So this is testing the genetics of your leukemia. Because we know that the leukemia usually has certain genetic abnormalities around it. You didn't inherit it. It didn't come from your father, it didn't come from your mother. You're not going to pass it on to your kids. But the leukemia itself has developed a genetic abnormality. And what particular genetic abnormality you have helps to determine whether your leukemia will progress quickly and also helps to determine whether your leukemia will respond well to chemotherapy or not. And there's one particular category in the green curve there which is a deletion of a gene called P53, which we know if you have that means that you're more likely to progress. It's not always true, but you're more likely to progress. And when you start chemotherapy, you may not respond as well to chemotherapy as other people. So that's a group of patients that we're trying to single out now to identify, it's pretty rare, but they're a group of patients that we're trying to single out and develop new treatment for because they don't really do very well they do okay, but not really well with the treatment that we have now. What's the last slide? Okay, this is just to show that we are working really hard at, at CLL. So this is chemotherapy, which damages the, the cell, the DNA of the cell. But in fact, this is just a small sample of the new drugs that we have at the moment in development for CLL. And essentially, um, I think we actually, and a few of these drugs are really looking um, like they're going to change the world. So a lot of these drugs um, will not be available on the market probably for a number of years. Um, usually when a new drug comes along, the way to get access to them is to in fact join a clinical trial. Uh, and if one's available and your doctor will usually tell you if there's a clinical trial available, which means that you get to access a drug I don't know, maybe usually five or seven years before you can actually get it on the open market. Um, so, but there are a number of really promising drugs coming along. And, you know, if you had asked me 10 years ago to give the TAM talk, I would say, oh, it's really depressing. Chemotherapy doesn't work properly. You know, <laughs> our patients are not responding well. Well, we're at the stage where chemotherapy is actually working quite well, but we're looking beyond chemotherapy. We're looking at ways to bypass chemotherapy, so hopefully with less side effects, and to treat those cells which are resistant to chemotherapy. I will test you guys about what the drugs are in about 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> so I expect everybody to remember them. Um, okay, transplantation. I've spoken about transplantation before, important a new immune system in. It's potentially curable because the new immune system can sometimes wipe out the leukemia, but it's very toxic. Um, so we tend to limit to younger patients where we think that the risk of the leukemia outweighs the procedure. So the procedure to put in perspective probably is about 20 to 30 percent death rate. So, but sometimes, so not something that you should volunteer for today. But if your doctor thinks that your leukemia is at such a bad stage that you know they worry about whether you survive the next little while, and they recommend that you have a transplantation, whether it's done with good reason. Um, I think this is my last slide. Okay, lifestyle hints. Okay, um, live a stress-free lifestyle. Really easy for, for me to say when I don't have leukemia. But um, okay, so the, the one thing that's probably keeping, keeping your leukemia under control is a healthy immune system. Okay, your immune system does keep your leukemia under control. It's not working great. That's why you have leukemia in the first place. But it, it does keep your leukemia under some control. Um, and that's probably part of the reason why, for some people, the, but the white cell doesn't change for, for years and years. Not because of the, the leukemia is not growing, but because the immune system is just picking off the excess bits. 
So you, we all know when we don't sleep and you have arguments and you, and you worry and, and work is giving you hell, that you, you get mouth ulcers and you get infections and colds. Your immune system gets sort of, you know, gets affected by those things. So, you know, try and, I don't know, de-stress your life. You know, you don't have to be at work at 4 a.m. <laughs> um, and, you know, try and just uh, let your doctor do the worrying a bit of your leukemia because it's better to just adopt a, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, try and de-stress your life um, and give your immune system a, a healthy background to work with. Um, have a balanced diet. Don't go crazy over select fruits. Yeah, I know green tea's got something that kills CLL, and red wine's got res respirator, which kills CLL, and watercress got PRTC that kills CLL, and you know, household bleach kills CLL as well, but, <laughs> you know, but, 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 but you know, I think you need to be sensible about what you eat. There's no magic food out there, okay? Your, your body functions best when it's eating a balanced diet. You know, fruit, veggie, carbohydrate, a bit of meat, not too much fat, not too much alcohol. A bit of alcohol is good. You don't have to get yourself too drunk every night. Um, so, especially green tea. Um, I don't know. If you really want to go to the toilet every 10 minutes, drinking <laughs> liters of green tea a day, that's fine. But I personally don't think it's useful. And sun protection. So I come from Australia. Probably you guys are less bad, but I come from Australia. And I can't emphasize how important sun protection is. Because people with CLL get a lot of skin cancers. I don't know why, but you get a lot of skin cancers. Um, and, the t and the risk starts almost as soon as you get diagnosed. So I have a number of patients that haven't had any problems with COL for 20 or 30 years since they're diagnosed. The COL is fine, but they're covered in scars. They've got skin cancers everywhere. So the investment starts today. Get a hat, get a long sleeve, be paranoid about the sun. Because you, the sun exposure that you get exposed to today will end up in skin cancers in 10 years' time. And your leukemia may be fine in 10 years' time, but you know, you may be having lots of surgery for skin cancers. That's my last slide. Um, I just thought I'd just give an introduction about CLL, and I'm very happy to take questions from the audience. Yes, sir? Um, I was just wondering about uh, vitamin D and yes. sunlight. You know, they sort of suggest you should yeah. um, have 10 minutes in the sun every day type of it. Yeah, so the question is about vitamin D and sunlight. Um, yes, um, most of us should probably get about 10 minutes in the sun every day, uh, and that's fine. Um, 10 minutes in the sun is not too bad, but if you go out playing golf, you know, put some sunscreen on. Um, and, you know, yeah, so 10 minutes is fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I begin to wonder if it's hereditary or in your genes. Some uh, literature says it's not hereditary in any way, but... Oh, okay. Uh, my mother passed away with it. Your mother? Yeah. Okay. So, the question is about whether CLO is hereditary. Yes, it is. In a, in a bit. So, first degree relative of someone with CLL or myeloma or lymphoma, so they all go together, have probably around two to four times the risk of getting a similar disease. So. Uh, you know, your brother, your sister, your children have a slightly increased risk. Now, two to four times start, look, sounds really high, but let's say CLL, I think the incidence is, the rate is about six every 100,000 per year. So if you double that risk, you know, the risk is 12 every 100,000 per year, I think you're more likely to win Powerball. So, <laughs> so, you know, yes, there is a hereditary component to it, and certain people, your immediate family members are at a higher risk of getting those diseases but not something that you should worry about too much, probably. Okay. No questions? Surely not. Yeah, there's skin cancer. Yes. Uh, um, I noticed that uh, I had to have some taken off the and the head and that. Mm. Um, I noticed it developed more after <laughs> I was diagnosed with CLL. Yeah. Um, I thought it was because my years were been outside in the, in the weather. Yeah. Uh, but it must, uh, as you say, it does help to uh, increase it. To cover up, yes. And I can see that your brother red, you got rather pink complexion, so you must have spent a bit of time in the sun when you were younger, is that right? I've worked outside all my life. Yeah, yeah. You've sort of got the sort of skin that we see a lot of skin cancer in. Yeah. Um, so, that's right. So, you know, when you have CLL, your immune system is a bit, is a bit compromised, it's a bit weak. 
um, and skin cancer tends to be, you know, an immune system controls skin cancer. So uh, it, it, part of the reason why you get a lot of skin cancers after you get diagnosed as CLL is the same reason why you get a lot of infections because the, you lose that, that immune ability. It's just like people have, who have kidney transplants, we put them on drugs to suppress the immune system to stop the, the kidney from being rejected. Well, when the immune system is suppressed, they get a lot of skin cancers. So same principle. And, you know, to be honest, you know, if the damage was probably done when you were younger, <laughs> so, um, and, and, you know, we'll continue to struggle with lots of skin cancers. Um, uh, but, but, you know, at least, you know, see a dermatologist and get yourself, get the new ones cut out early. Um, but, you know, you can, it's never too late to start some protection.